the bivalent boosters. Mm -hmm. It occurred to me in thinking about them that I had sort of accepted, I mean, there's a tremendous shenanigans being played with the so-called evidence that uh, suggests that they are safe and the evidence that they are effective. Um, it, it is, of course, nonsense. They use proxies like uh, the amount of antibody reaction that is stimulated being four times uh, the traditional one, which doesn't say anything about how effective it is. Um, but anyway, I wanted to get to the question. It, it occurred to me that I had accepted the idea of a bivalent booster. Bivalent means that it responds to two different antigens, um, one of them being the, uh, the OG COVID strain out of Wuhan, the other being uh, Omicron. And what was the first? The the original Wuhan strain. Oh, okay. Um, and so, okay, all well and good as far as that goes. They've got a single inoculation that triggers the production. It's an mRNA that triggers the production of the proteins from two different strains of COVID, uh, with the idea of alerting the immune system to either one of them so that it can respond. But the more I thought about it, it's not entirely clear. Bivalent does not explain which version of bivalent they are delivering. And the particular catastrophe that one predicts depends on which of these mechanisms they are using. Could be that they've taken uh, two full doses. They've taken a Wuhan dose and an Omicron dose, and they've put them together and they're giving you effectively a double dose, mm -hmm. uh, one of which <clears throat> is um, targeted at a strain that is, uh, as far as we know, extinct in the wild. It could be um, that they have linked these two things together in a single mRNA transcript. And so, you know, a cell will take in both messages and transcribe both proteins from uh, from one transcript. It could be that they have taken two transcripts and they've mixed them together and you get a half dose of each. So this is, I have not looked into this, um, but presumably that's proprietary. We don't know. We don't well, know what, what, what they mean precisely, what the mechanism is to produce this bivalent vaccine. I called Robert Malone and asked yes. him because this is his area and he knows it well. What yes. he believes is going on is that these are two separate transcripts being delivered at a half dose each. Mm. And I wanted to put a little color on what that implies. So that's based on what he... He doesn't have direct insider information, but that is what he predicts. That based is what on... he infers from what okay. he has seen. Okay. Now, I had a particular concern about this, and he suggested another one, which was on my radar, but probably not at a high enough priority. Mm -hmm. My concern is this. Longtime viewers will have heard me describe the hazard of this very poorly targeted vaccine, a vaccine, a so-called vaccine, that is supposed to have stayed locally at the site of injection, instead seems to circulate around the body and has no targeting mechanism whatsoever, so that it is taken up, you, randomly is probably the wrong word, stochastically is probably the wrong word, haphazardly is certainly a correct word, mm -hmm. which is to say it is yes. taken up by the cells that it encounters that have a high affinity for the lipid nanoparticles, and those aren't in any way good cells inherently to be transcribing this protein. In fact... Haphazard from unique initial conditions um, based on point of entry and the degree to which there is aspiration. Right. Yeah. Well, it could be... Yeah. Aspiration is one issue. It could be that certain cells have a greater tendency to take up lipid nanoparticle, and so those cells right. in whatever tissue they exist in yep. tend to be the transcribers or the so translators. So definitely not random and not... I think haphazard is haphazard as is, we get. Haphazard yeah. is definitely right. Whether any of these other terms apply, I don't know. Probably not. But yeah. in any case, the problem is that in order, if you take the brochure and what it says about how these vaccines are supposed to work, and you take <laughs> I'd it... I'd like one of those brochures. <laughs> it's a doozy of a brochure, but... Okay, so you've got these lipid nanoparticles coding mRNAs with a particular message yep. that um, gets translated in the cells. 
and exported to the surface of the cells where it's supposed to stick, and mm -hmm. at least in the original version, didn't. Um, but the problem is that the body will, when it sees a cell producing its own, your own antigens, as your cells all do, and also producing a foreign antigen, that is a red flag that the cell has been compromised by a virus. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's a pseudovirus, one made in a laboratory, but your body doesn't have any way of understanding what that would be. The fact that it was made in a laboratory doesn't make it a pseudovirus. This the is, fact that the, in this case it's not the full virus, it's just a, a transcript. No, I'm going to call it a pseudovirus because what it is... SARS-CoV-2? No. Or, okay. The, 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 the so-called, the transfection okay. agent, the lipid nanoparticle in the mRNA... But the reason it's a pseudovirus is not because it was made in the lab, which is what I thought I heard you say. Yep, yeah, it's just the fact that it's a coat that yes. gets it taken up into cells that then triggers those cells to yes. produce its proteins, yes. not their own. The body recognizes that as infection. Mm -hmm. There is only one rational thing to do with a virally infected cell from the point of view of the immune system, and that is to kill it. Killing cells can be not that big a deal if they are in tissues that are uh, well positioned to replace them. It has some cost. It accelerates aging somewhat. It reduces the capacity to repair somewhat, but probably very tolerably in some tissues. In other tissues, it's catastrophic. You do not want your heart cells attacked by your immune system, which have come to understand them as virally infected. That is an insane thing to allow to happen. Now, here's the crazy thing about these bivalent boosters. The Wuhan strain is, as far as we know, extinct in the wild. For them to give you half a dose of Wuhan in order to give you half a dose of updated means that you are wasting half of the cardiac risk for nothing. And other. Right. Half of the risk. Half of the risk. But mm -hmm. the cardiac risk, very serious, the risks of strokes and clots and other things, all of these risks, mm -hmm. half of what you're getting from this isn't liable to be valuable to you because the Wuhan strain isn't circulating. Yep. So why would we put you to any extra risk? If, if this was really about boosting your immunity by updating what they had given you already, yeah. right? it would make sense to just update you. Yeah. Why would you give this crazy cocktail that is out of date? Yeah. It's half yep. out of date. Okay? Yep. That's one thing. What Robert clued me into was what he was calling imprinting. I asked him, is that the same thing as original antigenic sin? And he said, very closely related, um, probably not worth drawing a distinction. But the idea is, okay. when you alert the immune system to a hazard with something that functions in some way like a vaccine, and in this case, these transfection agents turn your cells into a vaccine factory. So there is a vaccine involved here. It's not what they inject you with. It's you produce it, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but it's when, super elegant. Oh, it's it's clever. So clever. Yeah. But yeah, elegant is the wrong word. Yeah, elegant. It's clever. Yeah, <laughs> it's about as elegant as a sledgehammer. But, <laughs> um, but when you have this mechanism where you are alerting the immune system to something enough to cause it to mistake you for infected, enough to mount a response that is then useful when challenged with the pathogen. When you do that, you are tracking the immune system into an understanding of what world it is in. And when you keep vaccinating or triggering the production of a vaccine in the same neighborhood, what you're doing is you're broadcasting a message into your immune system that causes it to become effectively obsessed. And this is an insane thing to do in light of a world in which this A isn't the only pathogen you face, right? Tracking your immune system so that it sees COVID and only COVID is not a good idea. Yeah. What's more, you're creating an environment in which you're pushing the virus around evolutionarily so it's changing rapidly because you keep, you know, nudging it, right? At the same time, you're tracking the immune system to focus narrowly. This is not a rational course of action. So anyway, all I wanted to do was clarify, yeah. A, there are a lot of bodies buried under the word bivalent, right? The fact that we are 
you know, using mice instead of people, the fact that we are using antibodies as proxies for uh, effectiveness, response, right? The mm -hmm. fact that we haven't recognized the massive hazard that comes from the fundamental mechanism, even when this thing works, right? When it works, it's because it got into your cells and it got them to produce a foreign antigen. We haven't talked about the cumulative cost of the tissue that you're burning up as you keep getting more of these things and your body keeps regarding some new tissue as having been infected. We haven't talked about that. And if it's worth it, if the cost-benefit analysis reflects it, we would only know that from having had that conversation rather than forbidding that conversation. Yes. So anyway, I thought that belonged there because we keep hearing so much about these bivalent vaccines. And, you know, it sounds like one more a uh, whiz-bang bit of scientific <laughs> cleverness when, in fact, it's a whiz-bang bit of scientific recklessness. Or whiz, yes, good uh, recklessness. Yeah, I wouldn't say good, but bad. How's that? Good on you. Nice, okay. nice, All nice right. uh, analysis. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, was, I was not Yeah, you weren't congratulating the, there, the no. bivalent transfection agents. No, I was not. No. No, I was not. Actually, um, that's a really terrible band name, isn't it? Trivalent. The bivalent. Bi trivalent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get there. <laughs> uh, ooh, can't wait.